forth. We ask that you bless it, that it come on good soil, bring fruit, edify for your kingdom. We ask that the word of my mouth be, and the ministry of my heart be accepted in your eyesight. My Lord, my strength, and my redeemer. In your son's name I pray. Amen. Amen. Today is going to be it's an important message because it's called the fivefold ministry. Mm. Amen. It's the topic says the fivefold ministry. What are they and where are they now? All right. Amen. Mm -hmm. What are they and where are they now? And if I could put a subtopic to it, it'll be ministry in action. Absolutely. Amen. Hey. Ministry in action because it's very important that you know how to access the ministry that God has given you. Wow. Amen? Because you can have the ministry but don't know how to tap into it. That's the truth. Don't know how to make it work for you. Absolutely. Don't know how to access what attributes God has given to you for the people. Yes. Mm -hmm. Because, oh my goodness, many times the, 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 the anointing and the stuff that's for your people is just waiting there for you to tap into it. But if you don't have a relationship and if you don't know how to pull those things out from God that are yours, you won't get it. Right. And then your ministry will be there, but it won't be action. There won't be no 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 motivation, no drive. Amen. So we're gonna talk a little bit about ministry and action and about the five for ministry. We're gonna come from Acts chapter one, verse twenty-three. And you know the reason why the Lord gave me that one is because one of the things he's been showing me is that ministry that's lacking needs to be fulfilled and right now some things in the ministry that are lacking amen because before the holy ghost came on the apostles they had to bring back the empty seat of judas yes, yes, they yes. had to fill that seat before the holy ghost could fall That's and right. there's many ministries that have vacant seats Come on, somebody. You got to catch God. this. If you got vacant seats, the anointing and the Holy Ghost can't fall. Why? Because there's a vacant seat that must be filled. 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 And that's what happened here. The anointing could not drop from the upper room until they found someone to take the place of Judas. Back then they cast lots, but now we just pray and fast. And what the Lord was dealing with me about is that, you know, there's open vacancies in ministry that must be filled. And not only filled, but they could be filled temporarily or they could be filled permanently. But they should not be left open. Amen. They should not be left open. And that's what's important because he showed me that there's some things that are left open that is hindering the movement of the ministry. So it can't do the action that he wants it to do because there's still offices that are not filled. So then we got to take a, a check on our ministry. You know how it goes in the Bible. It's the first some apostles, some pastors, some teachers. Yeah. Well, if you don't have all that operation, then it's not going to work. So what the Lord was dealing with me was saying, Bishop, you're in two offices. Why? And you're straining yourself. You're pulling yourself apart because you're in two offices. You need to fill that position, that vacant, before I can release what I have for your ministry. Jesus. So I'm like, Lord, what are you saying? He said, well, then watch what comes in your midst. Because, once again, I'm getting off the... But once again, you know the, the, the story about the boat and the guy drowning, and he's asking for help. And then when the help comes, he let it go by. She or he, and then the help come again, let it go by. And then he said, Lord, what happened? The Lord said, Well, I sent them. But you didn't pay attention and grab hold to them. So what he's saying is when your ministry is lacking and he sent the persons or persons to fill the void, grab hold to it. That's right. And he's also telling me to let the world know, don't be afraid to ask for help. Jesus. And I don't care who don't like it or who say otherwise. I have to have covering. That's I have right. covering right. as far as outreach, overseas covering, but I also have outreach, inreach covering that needs to be fulfilled. Jesus. Offices are open in here. Yes. Prophets. 
apostles are open in here. Elders, pastors, we got. Them are not here. And the Lord is telling me they must be filled. I said, well, Lord, how, how are we going to do this? He says, just watch. And once that gets done, the ministry can take off. Ooh, yes. I'm not ashamed to say it. Yeah, I have to stand in offices that are not mine. Just like when I had to be a drummer. I'm not a drummer, but I had to be because there wasn't one there. Right. I'm not an organ player, but I had to be because there wasn't one there. I'm not ordained yet as, but I have to be. That's so right. I have to be the prophet and the apostle when it's needed. All right. But then it takes away from my yes. bishopric because I'm doing three things. When I need to be focused on one, the apostle says, when they were in, the, in, the, in their teaching, he says, let us be about the ministry of the word of God and let someone else do the tables. I can't do anything. That's, right. That's, That's right. a wise steward. Mm -hmm. Don't want to try to be who they are not. Yes. But until that position is filled, I have to be there and it's not right. Especially when you know the gift of the person that has it or persons are there. So you say, Lord, what do you do? He said, then you have to fill the vacancy. And don't be afraid to fill it. But this is the, I'm getting all out, but this is the catch 22 about that. You got to be careful because the revelation, it tells you about Jezebel who called herself a prophetess. So you might be Oh my God. You might be lacking in that office and then you wind up picking a Jezebel. Ah, all right. Hello. Because the devil will send you what you need. Yes, he will. If you're not careful, you will wind up having the wrong day in the right place. That's right. Hmm. That's right. So that's why you got to be careful and don't let any and everybody fill that position. That's why the Lord was showing me it's been open for so long. But I didn't realize that till last night. So now he's telling me the positions are being filled. You see, let me, let me show you. Let me slow down a little bit. Because you don't, you might not understand it, but, but, but the ministry started out with my late great apostle, Dr. Right? Gladys Duguay and that was the apostle of glory of God with the ministry. Mm -hmm. But now the opening is there. I need, God said, I need another in the office. Jesus. Come on, somebody. Right. Just like we had Bishop Caldwell, but we had also another bishop named Austin that was bishop over our ministry. Right. But then when God ordained me, we had to get out from over there and become the bishop here. Sure. But there's still an opening in the apostleship. Mm -hmm. But the bishopship has been built. Now the prophet office is still open. So, you know, I'm just trying to teach people when you get into ministry and you want your ministry to be an active, you got to be understanding what's lacking in there yeah. and know how to fix it. Absolutely. All right, come on now. Mm -hmm. Don't fool yourself thinking you got all of the, the gifts and, and operation by yourself. There's not no one person that can do all nine ministry gifts. That's right. All the time. Absolutely. After a while, you're going to have to let somebody else work. That's the truth. And it's a shame that many people don't want to let other people work or help them in their ministry. And I'm like, Lord, I'm done. we got to get some people to help do the office because I'm about not tired, 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 but tired. I'm doing it all. Yes, yes. And I'm a firm believer that there's a apostle over bishops. I know there's people that got it twisted the other way around, but that's just how I know. The, the Lord has the shown order. me, my, I need order. me an apostle over me. That's I'm submitting to an right. apostle. I have to submit to an apostle. You're talking right. And I'm not ashamed to say what God told me to do. Absolutely. So I will deny me. Because I have to have mine. Yeah, come on, somebody. Y'all yeah, yeah, gotta get this stuff here. So today we have the gifts of the Spirit. Like we said, we do not need to cast lots, but we see that no office should be open for long. When all the offices are filled, the Lord can work with the Holy Spirit as He wills it to flow. 
Because see, when all of us ain't filled, then he has to flow a certain way. He can't flow the way he want to flow because it's not all filled. That's right. He can't use me to prophesy when I'm not the prophet. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. So I can't give you prophecy except if it's really needed. Uh -huh. But if I have a prophet, then he can go and give it like he's supposed to. Or she's supposed to. And a lot of people don't understand that. They think they can do it all, but I'm a prophet. I can prophesy to you. I'm a bishop. I can do this. Not. No. You got your own office. Let somebody else do their office. Absolutely. But he's dealing with me because I'm not picking on nobody's ministry. But if your ministry got 18 bishops, what's the point? <laughs> Hello? You got people that wish they had somebody to help them. Lend one. If you see, oh, it's in here. If you see that a ministry is in need of help, why won't you help if you got enough to lay ones to help them with? Wow. The body of Christ said we are all members. If I'm missing an arm and a leg, arm and a leg, then why can't you let me hold an arm and a leg if we are in this together? That's right. And I've been preaching this. You have a person in the, in the ministry, he got 18 musicians, and they're all just sitting in the side. And only one, well, they let me hold one of those. But no, they're afraid to let their gift go somewhere else when someone else is needing the gift. Use it or lose it. And don't hold on to your gift for so long. If you know you got the anointing to do something, then if somebody got an opportunity, do it. Seize the moment in ministry. And this is the same thing as it is when you're out there working. If you have a job and there's a vacancy and somebody come to fill it, you let them fill it even if it's temporary. And what the Lord is telling me to tell you, you don't have to be permanent. You don't even have to be part of. You just have to have the anointing and want to help the people. You don't have to join in to be under my ministry to help the ministry. That's right. You don't need all these credentials for me just to help. This is confirmation. You could just help because you want to help. That's right. If you see a need and it's void, you need to fill it. Uh -huh. Don't be afraid of what people might say. Who cares? Get your blessing. Right? That's right. Listen to this. I'm going to tell you a little secret. I wanted to be a chef, so what I do? I help when the chef was missing. I helped out. I act as if. Mm -hmm. I fill the void. A couple of years later, I became mm -hmm. what I filled in to be. Right. You can't become if you don't want to fill in to help work out what you got. You will sit and let your gifts go cold. Wow. Uh, it don't have to be yours, but you could be a part of it. That's right. Eventually, you might become partner. You might own it. Mm -hmm. Hello, I, if I would have stayed on that job, I probably would have been partner. Mm -hmm. There's no limit. To the opportunity God will give you in ministry. Because it's an action thing. And it cannot work right if you don't have the right connections or the right people inside. And he's been dealing with me on this area. First Timothy chapter 3. Just to confirm or confirm, confound, confirm, confirm. Some things that you need to understand. First Timothy chapter 3, it tells us about the bishops. So when you have the fivefold ministry, which I want to get into, you know, Apostle Pastor, some people go in the Bible and say, well, I don't see Bishop there. Well, read yes, First Timothy yes, chapter yes, 3, yes. you'll see Bishop. Yes, it's you will. Office. It's in there. First Timothy chapter 3, it tells you. It's in there. So even, and it's part of the fivefold. It's part of it. You have to have it in operation. You cannot have a successful ministry without all of them working in unison. That's right. Because not one person has it all. Amen. So you see Bishop in 1 Timothy chapter 3. So, so there we go. Even if it's not recorded in the fivefold ministry, it is still part of the fivefold ministry. So what do we do when it comes to the fivefold ministry? Can it be that we are just to say whatever we want? This is something. And ordain, ordain whoever we want out of feelings. Just because I feel good for you, I want to ordain you as... No. Just 
That because you're my friend, I'm going to put you in that office? No. Nope. But because you show the attributes of that office that need to be filled. So if I have a resume, but I don't show what's on the resume, I'm not hiring you. You have to show what your resume actually says. So if you say you're a prophet, and if I don't see the attributes in the spirit of Christ, I ain't hiring you. Hey, all right now. You got to show what you are in ministry. Because the once again, the Bible says they crept in unaware. They disguise, have a form. Know them that labor amongst you. But if you don't pay attention, then they'll destroy your whole congregation. Your whole flock. Discord. They will sow discord. Jesus. Are you talking? Because they can't get to you. So they are trying to get to the least one. But thank God for wisdom. Uh, we have training in this ministry. Thank you, Lord. <laughs> we uh, train the face. Thank you, Jesus. That's right. They know what to look for. Right. And they know what to do. Thank Not you, controlling, but just understanding the will of God for the ministry. That's right. That's how you teach people. Thank you, Lord. In ministry, teach people, not dictate, not train, I mean, mean, take over, but teach them. Say, look, we, the Lord showed me that this is going to happen next week. I want y'all, blah, 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 blah. And then when next week come, we ready. Because we know already what's going to happen. And you, they can tell you, the minute we say it, and then we come, it happens exactly like I said. Exactly. Wow. And you better watch it. And then they watch it, and they see it, and say, yep, you was right, that's what happened. Many occasions. Yep. Many occasions. Because the anointing tells me 4C was happening, even though I'm not in that office, but I have to see for the church. Uh -huh. But now the Lord is telling me fill them positions. He said, fill them positions. And I'm going to send them to be filled. But then again, you tell to say, Lord, it's up to them. It's not up to me. I can lend the right hand of fellowship. But it's up to you to take it. But you got to remember, the right hand won't be there forever. Seize the moment. Yes. Come on, somebody. He's saying that to someone. Seize the moment. The word of God has no favorites. The word of God has no special person. That's right. All we know is the word of God has has said, if your brother or your sister is in need, help them. That's right. It don't care what office you hold, help them. If you see they lacking or you see they need something, help them. Why not? It can't hurt you to help somebody else. It'll better you. Because if I know I can play and I know I can sing and somebody's having a service and they need someone to sing, why wouldn't I share my gift for a little while? That's That's good. Help those that are in need of help. And in the same wise, you help yourself. That's right. Because you're using your anointing and your gift. Maybe not in the capacity you want to, but in the capacity God wants you to. Amen? Amen. Because y'all right, don't anoint them because they are your friends. That's why they get that position in ministry. This is wrong. Because if you ordain people out of selfish desires, then when they get in the office and have to prove themselves, they can't prove themselves because you ordained them in the wrong office. That's right. Or you ordained them in the right office, but you never taught them how to use that office. So when trials and tribulations come their way, God bless you, Apostle. God bless you. When trials and tribulations come their way, they fall down because they have never been taught about that office they're in. Yes. When you ordain them. Now, if they come in preordained, then that's a different story. That's when you just let them be and see and talk. You don't need to ordain them. You don't need to them. You just let them do what God said they do and then 
maybe six months later if they haven't shown the proof, then you have a discussion and say, could I use you in this office? Because the anointing on you is for this office. Even though they came in preordained with another office, but you see from the spirit of Christ that the anointing is in another office, then it's your job to kindly, mm. again, right hand of fellowship, and respectfully saying, I have an area that you will best fit in. Could you please use this area? You can still let them keep their title, but their operation will be where they need to be. That's right. Somebody catch that. That's right. That's right. Other, until it comes to that time, they still could be who they say they are and work in where they need to be. Y'all ain't catch that. Yes, yes, yes. All right, let me put it in layman terms. You might ordain me a prophet. So I will stay the prophet. But if I'm a deacon and you put me in that office, I'll be working a deacon but still have the title as a prophet. Right. But I'll be working and be effective as a deacon because that's who I really am. Yes. That's right. Catch Preordained by somebody else that didn't know who you really were. So when you came in, we seen and we showed, but we kept you where you at, but put you in the office where you belong. Common sense. Because if you don't do that, then you're going against their anointing or their whatever they got from the other ministry, and, and you lose them. Be wise. Be wise, as a dog. Be wise. Use your anointing and wisdom for wisdom of God. Don't be foolish. Same thing with my, my elder. Associate pastor. The Lord changed the elder. That does not mean she lose associate pastor. That just means she been elevated to elder. If you go in your in your Bible and if you look at the history, elder and pastor are similar. Hello, somebody. If you really look at it, an elder and a pastor does the same, except that the pastor is more about the sheep, and the elder is still a pastor in a different office, a different right. Mm -hmm. Y'all better get some understanding of this word, man. It's the truth. So it wasn't a demotion. It was just a same thing, but a different name. Because a different, oh my God. My, a my different word. area had to be filled. You don't need three pastors. That's right. But if you need, if you see you got an uh, elder, that's, that's in, then you need to fill that office. Read what the first apostles, pastors, teachers, elders, come on. So you fill that office. And even if I didn't see it, the person saw it for me and spoke and did what God said to me. So don't think, glory of God, don't know what they're doing. We just don't explain to everybody everything that's going on. All right now. <laughs> you can't tell everybody everything. Sometimes you have to hold a card back. Hold your hand. Don't show it all the time. So get it back into this. So, so the person wouldn't be able to tell you if they were ordained or not taught for the office they're in. When, when the test comes, they'll fail. Because automatically, the minute you get ordained, somebody's going to come and test you. And they're going to come and say, well, what does evangelist mean? That's right. You're an evangelist, then tell me what it means. I, I, I know why I know. Because when I first got saved, I went on the train and I was tested all that time on the train. I was tested by one person and another person sat there and opened up a Bible and said this. Another person sat there and another person and they kept testing me to prove if I knew. And I don't know these people. I believe there were angels that were sent just to see and I passed every test. They said, you passed. God bless you. And walked off the train. You, I mean, I've been through some stuff in ministry. I've been proven. By God. And, and that's why I know if you take a position, you will be test in that position. And that's why people fail because they in somewhere they don't belong, but because your buddies <laughs> just put them in there. 
Now, I have positions the Lord showed me positions that need to be filled.